Well, we all opened the tissues at our table. <laughs> well, speaking of things at your, at your table, um, each of you have, a, have actually a gift at each of your place settings, and feel free to open your gift at this time. So we're all going to open our, our gifts together. Is that all right? And uh, I wish I had a funny joke like one of you has the keys to a brand new car, but... <laughs> <clears throat> now, we hope that you will use this token throughout your journey in life, and you rem remember that hospice will always be there when you need it. It's your compass. This long and difficult journey is not over when a person passes away. The people who are left behind often have an uphill climb ahead as they deal with the grief that is upon them trying to pick up the pieces and to move on without the person they've said goodbye to. Now, for families who are involved in hospice prior to a death, the bereavement staff and volunteers provide support for at least 13 months after the death, helping them through those painful firsts the first Thanksgiving, the first Christmas, the first birthday, the first anniversary of the death of the loved one. In addition, hospice offers grief support to anyone in the community, whether they've used hospice before the death of a friend or a loved one or, or not. Their grief counselors readily share their resources and expertise with individuals and organizations and other professionals in our community in an effort to bring healing to all who need it. Their grief support groups are open to anyone who has experienced a death, and we hope that you will help those in your life have the access to that support when they need it. On the highway of grief, everyone travels at different speeds. Some people heal more quickly than others. Some will crash. Some will have difficulty making repairs. Some will cruise on seemingly unscathed. Everybody's different, but everybody's normal. There is no wrong way to grieve, and there is no timeline. Hospice can help with that journey also because it's there for those who want that kind of navigational support. And now it's the time for our final tribute speaker of the night. He's a friend of mine. Would you please welcome to the podium, Neil Glessner. Neil. My mom, who we affectionately called Doey, passed away on April 10th of this year. She was a class act. She had a style of her own. She loved socializing with her friends. And when she drove, she had a bit of a lead foot. <laughs> in short time, she managed to find every speed camera in town. <laughs> Some more than once. And I know this firsthand since all the citations were mailed to me at our company. <laughs> she was a very experienced shopper. She loved to tell stories, even if you've heard them before. And she loved to give little gifts. Um, in fact, she had a room filled with small items in her house. Uh, filled with small items and gift wrap just in case a special moment snuck up on her. She lived a healthy lifestyle. She enjoyed sharing her wisdom of nutrition. She was competitive. She loved playing cards, a game called Train, Scrabble, and she even learned to use an iPad so she could play competitively with friends who lived far away. 
She had very strong faith, perhaps from her Mennonite upbringing. And I was surprised to find so many faith-based books that she had annotated in once she had passed. I mean, I found them after she had passed. Most importantly, she believed that all of us were put on this earth for a specific purpose. And as a result, she always put an emphasis on teaching her children and grandchildren the important values, important values, so we would one day discover our purpose on earth and live a meaningful life. Dahlia believed that her purpose was to help others, and she demonstrated this through her efforts volunteering in numerous nonprofits within our community. She had a fondness for breast cancer awareness, um, where she honored my late sister Paige. Dahlia also believed in bringing happiness to everyone that she interacted with. Everyone who knew Dahlia knew that she had a gift of making you feel special. So the question is, how did Dowie do that? How did she make everyone feel special? Everyone in her life feel special? Now, I don't have the exact answer, but I would like to share several pieces of wisdom that she taught many of us through her lifetime. She believed in these simple rules about friendship. When someone you care about gets the rug pulled out from under, under them, be the first one there to help them get back up. When you have an opportunity to turn a dull moment into a lively one, do it. Friends love it when you can make them laugh or smile. Always be dependable and only make realistic promises and fulfill everyone. And when you have a fond memory of a friend, let them know that you've been thinking of them. She believed in the following when it came to choosing friends. You only have room for so many friends in your social garden. If someone's no good for you, weed them out. They're taking up valuable space. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that are positive and enjoy life because they are contagious. And find a good friend that's spontaneous because they're always good to go. <laughs> when it came to raising a family, she taught me several things. She taught me to never be too busy for family. Appointments can be rescheduled. Special moments can be lost forever. She taught me that if a child attempts to talk to you, always drop everything and give them your undivided attention. She taught me... to always make time for special one-on-one -on -one moments for each member of the family. And to tell children each time when you're proud of them. And it's important to sit down as a family and eat as a family on a regular basis. And no, no matter how much effort it takes, it's always worth getting the whole family together for special occasions. Here are mom's life lessons when it comes to building character. She believed it was important to know how to keep a secret. It's important to trust your gut's instinct. Always pull the quiet person into the conversation because they will often have the most substance to offer. And to plant toilet bulbs because they are the easiest thing in the world to plant and they give you reoccurring pleasure every spring. I find it ironic that tulips will always bloom near the anniversary of her death. And she often said there was nothing more haunting in life than regret. And that if you aren't modest, you're proving to others that you're undeserving. So what do all her morsels of wisdom mean? And that's what they are, morsels. Tiny pieces that make a whole. Can you take all these pieces and combine them into a whole so you can answer the question, how did Dowie make everyone in her life feel so special? It's almost like we're trying to take these pieces and put together a puzzle without knowing what the picture is on the box. When my mom resigned from fighting her battle, she said that she spoke with God and that, he was at peace, and that she was at peace with going to heaven. I thought to myself, how can you be at peace with going to heaven? 
how can you be okay with leaving all of us who love you? It was a very confusing time for me, but eventually I figured it out. What I realized was that when mom spoke to God, he showed her the picture on the box. She finally solved the puzzle that she had spent her entire life trying to solve. It was at that moment when she realized that she had completed her journey on earth. She was at peace because she realized that she had taught every lesson there was to be taught and that she had touched every life that was possible for her to touch. The only thing that she didn't do for all of us was tell us what the picture was on the box. And it's not because she was good at keeping a secret. It's because she knew that solving life's puzzle was not important. What was important was her journey. And that is how Doey touched so many lives. I also have a surprise announcement to make. I'm going to ask my, Mary, my wife Mary to come up here in a moment and help me make this announcement. But before I do, I need to provide a little background about Doey's final journey. First, I'm proud to say that Doey never left, Doey was never left alone during the weeks that she was in the hospital. This was accomplished by family and by her many loving friends that my wife and I are honoring here as our guests tonight. Could you all please stand up? And Doris should be at this table, but she hosted her own, and I believe she's back here, Doris Lehman. Thank you. Also, Doey's sister and my Aunt Bev, who took the lead on providing Doey's care, could not be here tonight. When my mom resigned from fighting her battle, we were shocked when the hospital informed us that she was being discharged at 11 o'clock the following day. We panicked since she wasn't in shape for our support group of family and friends to care for her alone. At that time, our only known option was a nursing home, and we scrambled to get her admitted. When we arrived at the nursing home, we knew immediately that it was the wrong place for her. It wasn't because we picked a bad nursing home. It's because nursing homes have very different goals and objectives than the ones you would have for a loved one during their final days. The room was cramped. She had no privacy, and since she had a, she had no privacy since she had a roommate, and there wasn't a chair on her side of the room, so there was barely enough space for a metal chair, a metal folding chair that we had borrowed from the nurses' station. Gathering at a family in the room wasn't an option, and since space was so limited, sleeping was impossible, and my gosh, it was noisy. I actually made a recording at my mom's bedside, and I asked Tim if he'll play it, please. <laughs> That beeping happened every time somebody on the floor needed help, so it beeped like that constantly, day and night. When I realized that this was how my mom was going to spend her final moments, I went and found a corner in the hallway and I cried. I knew that if my mother was going to spend her final moments there, that it was going to torment me for the rest of my life. Thank goodness Karen Spesser told us about two angels on earth named Lori and Rhonda who are here. And we lined them up with the expert assistance of hospice, and they helped us get everything that we needed to move Doey home. When I told Doey that we found a way to care for her at home, she reached over and squeezed my hand and said, Neil, that's wonderful. I'm not happy here, and I didn't want to say anything because I figured this was the best you could do. Doey spent her final days under hospice care in a peaceful environment, surrounded by loved ones, and she was provided the peace and dignity that she deserved. Now here's where things get a little absurd. Even though my mom had good health insurance, the insurance would not pay for the first 60 days of in-home skilled care. So that meant that we were faced with the potential expense of $17,000 out of pocket. 
you stop and think about it, that means dying with dignity in Washington County has a huge price tag. If someone needs skilled care and they can't afford it, their only option at that point is a nursing home like the one I described. This isn't fair, and we're going to do something about it starting tonight. Come up here, please, Mary. It's my wife, Mary. <laughs> Mary and I are very proud to announce that we have agreed to chair a capital campaign that will build a hospice house in Washington County. <laughs> Most great communities have hospice houses. It's Washington County's turn, and it's going to be named after Dowie. A hospice house is the best of both worlds. It's a home-like setting that provides the peace and comfort you would get at home, but it also provides the immediate medical attention you would get in an institution while under hospice's care. Everyone in Washington County deserves the right to die with dignity, and Dowie's house will be for anyone who needs it, not for just anyone who can afford it. In a hospice house, all the rooms are large and decorated like home. There will be plenty of room to accommodate large families. Each room will have a private patio so guests can enjoy the sun or have their family pets visit. There will be common areas for families to gather. There will be a chapel, a toy room for the children, areas to grieve, and beautiful surrounding gardens. It's our goal to create what will be the closest thing to heaven on earth. Though his lifelong goal was to have positive impact on others' lives, we are proud that Doe's house will do just this for so many and for so many years to come. Thank you. <laughs>